Cool. I want to uh, introduce you to Yusuf Kaka. He's been a, a very influential person in my life. Uh, Yusuf is with MTM Group, and he is also from an engineering, electronic engineering specifically background. So, uh, Yusuf, as a way of introduction, um, maybe you can tell us how on earth you uh, managed to get into engineering. What, what got you into engineering? Thank you very much, Dennis, and uh, good to chat to you again. Engineering found me. I, I didn't really find engineering. Um, as far back as I can remember, I've, uh, I've been a tinker. Um, I was one of those kids that, um, you know, broke a toy the same day that, that I got it. But um, I probably enjoyed putting it back together more than I did, uh, you know, playing with it when it was uh, new. Um, so I, as far back as I can remember, I was, you know, scavenging, looking for uh, little motors and uh, LEDs and whatever I could uh, find from, from broken parts of toys. And then, uh, you know, a, a series of, of things later on kind of led me towards engineering. Uh, one of those that's kind of sticks in my mind is um, uh, my, my mother. My mother was um, uh, and still is a teacher. Both my parents are actually teachers. Um, but my mother was uh, very keen on, on um, formalizing her education. She was a teacher, but she wasn't um, formally trained as one. She, uh, um, but, but while she was teaching, she, she started a course uh, to try and educate herself and get a proper certificate. And uh, she chose computers. And this was when I was about uh, eight or nine years old. Um, and, and she got herself, uh, as part of the course, a little ZX Spectrum computer. And, um, you know, I, I would sit alongside her as she was busy coding up and, and, and watching things happen on the screen. And then, you know, things got a little bit um, busy for her and, and she had to um, give up that course. But I, I had the, you know, the ZX Spectrum available to me and I had her, her, her books and things. And I ended up, uh, you know, teaching myself a little bit of uh, basic programming at the time. Later on... Uh, I got myself a Commodore 128 as a gift from, from an uh, uncle, and, and that kept my interest in, in computing. Um, and uh, also at some point, I remember I, I actually got this yearbook um, that my, my mother used to keep updated every year with my school reports and stuff like that. But uh, you had to fill in on a, on a yearly basis, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? And the first entry, which was kind of standard four or five, I put scientist. Uh, but um, later on, in yeah. about standard five, which is, um, uh, you know, grade seven, I, I put down, I want to be an engineer. Mm. So that, there's this point in time where I kind of figured out uh, or heard about engineering. And um, I think what appealed to me about it was... Um, um, you know, the fact that it combined science with some sort of practicality. Uh, my whole investigation into what scientists were about looked a little bit too academic for me and too theoretical, and I like to tinker, as I said, so engineering sounded a lot more um, interesting for me. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. I think many people follow that route of starting with science because that's our first exposure. And then you realize to do something very practical is, is a big need that some people have, especially to solve problems and um, to make the world a different place, at least, if not better. Um, could, you, uh, could you tell me a bit more about the, after you've started studying engineering, um, what was the part of it that you enjoyed most at university? Yeah, I mean, um, it definitely turned out to be very different from what I had imagined on, on campus and studying. Um, I, I was completely, um, you know, shocked by the volume of work and, and, and complexity of the work uh, initially. I remember that vividly. But um, at the same time, what really was out of this world exciting for me was attending physics lectures. I just loved them. I mean, um, the kind of information that I'd always been struggling to find at school, um, you know, uh, Back in the day, no internet, so you know we used to spend a lot of, or I used to spend a lot of time in libraries looking for you know the kind of stuff that would interest me. But uh, having it at my at my doorstep at university, and you know having professors and, and lecturers that would uh, be able to answer the you know 
any question that you had. I mean, that was just such a, a treat for me. I, I really, really enjoyed that. Could you could you talk me through the type of work that you do every day uh, right now? What are the what are the what does a typical day in your life look like, and how much of your engineering expertise do you actually use? So um, you know, cer- certain themes and, and things have stuck with me all along. Um, my final degree was electrical engineering, um, but um, um, you know, I've always been throughout my career involved with software. Um, although here and there I, I dabbled in uh, RF kind of stuff, electronics here and there as well, um, and then you know more, um, should I say, architectural kind of engineering work. But at the moment I'm in product development. That's what my my title says. Uh, my my role is um, you know to to identify needs that customers might have um, uh, in, in our markets and then you know, produce products that they could use on top of that. Um, my day-to-day is still software focused. I look after technology teams. Uh, although I kind of sit between the business side and the, and the technology side, um, I get to interpret what the, the, the business guys want and then direct uh, the engineering teams to be able to, to bowl that out. Um, some of it is operational, so I spend um, quite a bit of time just making sure that things are working and performing as they should. Things are scaled as uh, as expected. Um, so a, a certain proportion of my time goes there. Um, and then a lot of my time also goes into people management. Uh, that, that, that's one of the things I maybe did not anticipate the importance of, um, you know, even after university. But, you know, it's something that you learn through um, your working experience how important that is. Um, the skill of being able to uh, lead other people and, and convey to other people what your intention is or what the business's intention is um, makes all the difference actually uh, at the end of the day. Well, just, just to come back to this, the, the, the engineering skill that you think you, that was most useful to you in your job at the moment that you've picked up at university? Mm-hmm. I think one of the things that I almost did was um, was go the computer science route, um, and I'm glad that I ended up sticking with engineering. And, and the reason I say that is, what I think engineering brings to to the party that may, not many other uh, fields bring on is um, you know big picture thinking, the the ability to draw on knowledge that. Um, isn't vertical but more horizontal. Um, you know that that way of thinking, even though it's hard to put your finger down and say there was a course X or or you know um, or anything specific at university that that um, that taught you that skill. It, it's the combined the, the way the programs are run um, in engineering and the way you encourage to think. Um, you know. I, that's a skill I've drawn all the time. It's not always just, you know, bringing on technical solutions to problems. Some, it's just about being able to think outside of the box, solve, solve problems any way you can, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just talking to someone before you now, and, and the one thing that, um, that is clear is that everybody picked up a skill around problem solving. So, so mm-hmm. the one theme that's very common is engineering has to do with problems. And everybody picked up a skill that's important to them that's around solving a problem. And I think that's the core of being an engineer, right? You, you basically solve problems. Um, if you were to try to cast your mind back to when you matriculated, um, what would your advice be to somebody who would want to study engineering? Yeah. Um, look, I think you have to face the reality that, um, you know, after after matric, that first step into university is going to be a tough one. Um, I think a lot of um, a lot of potential engineering candidates drop out at that first year um, because they they don't anticipate the the amount of dedication and work it takes mm. to get into that rhythm. It's it's just a rhythm that you need to get into that's completely different from school. And once you've got it, everything becomes a lot easier, and you start enjoying things again. Um, and many engineers that I've um, 
you know, had conversations with, coached uh, through university. Uh, some of my cousins are, are engineers today as well, younger, younger cousins. And that first year can be very tough. And, and um, you know, I, I struggled myself. I, I, I was really borderline in my first year. And I, a lot of my friends and colleagues uh, uh, at university dropped out in that first year. Um, but, you know, I persisted. I, um, I, I, I didn't get too negative about it and, and you know, uh, learned from my mistakes and carried on. I think that's the best advice I can give to anybody that is in, entering engineering. Don't, don't, don't be too disheartened if, you know, you were used to doing very well at school because of your, your national capabilities or whatever else it might be. Uh, you will learn to work hard at university. Uh, you know, just take that as part of, of the lesson and carry on. And was it worth it? Absolutely. Absolutely. I wouldn't, uh, you know, I wouldn't have done it any other way. Um, till today, I mean, regardless of what my job title might be or where it might go, I, I always see that as secondary to, um, you know, uh, my profession engineering. I, I, I always... Uh, identify first as an engineer and then second anything else. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a pretty strong statement. Okay. <laughs> Joseph, I really appreciate your time. Uh, thank you for, for sharing your wisdom and your thoughts with us. Um, and uh, all the best with your, with your job. Thank you very much, Ines. It was a pleasure.